Okay, this video shouldn't be at the breakneck speed of the uh, last video, uh, hopefully. In fact, look at look at me here. I'm sort of struggling with this. Um, I want to talk a little bit about student impressions of, of HyFlex uh, because it, it, it might inform some of what we plan to do here, right? And it might surprise you, this, the student impressions of HyFlex at least in the small n, you know, sort of uncontrolled studies we have, they're 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 uh, largely positive, right? I mean, actually, really positive, right? Like twenty two percent of students in one study would would pay extra to have high flex versus a regular face to face course. Another study found that uh, after it, about sixty percent of students said it was uh, their preferred, right? Their preferred um, method, you know, or mo modality. But there's an important caveat to all of this, because one of the reasons why the students are so positive about this in the surveys is it's framed as choice, right? So I, I don't know if you remember, but at the very, uh, you know, at the last video, can we remember uh, back that far? Um, in the last video, we talked about how the students in traditional high flex get to choose each week what they want. Very often, they'll go to face-to-face -to -face at the beginning of the semester, and then they'll do mainly asynchronous except maybe near the end they come back uh, and do synchronous, right? They, they actually uh, use face-to-face um, -face, uh, less than half the time on average, um, and they use online synchronous almost none, which will be interesting to see whether that, whether that holds. Um, but, you know, here's, here's the, the point, right? Um, and, and the, the difference between their pre-course feelings and their post-course feelings are interested in too. Like uh, in the pre-course, they expect, uh, you know, that face-to-face -face will be sort of their wild, the wild favorite of how they will participate in the course. They're going to be at face-to-face. -face. They love face-to-face, -face, right? Uh, and then they um, think asynchronous is not so good, right? It's not very attractive, right? After the course is over, right? After the course is over, um, you find that they're, they're they have shifted a little bit here let's move this down here give us some space all right so so pre-course they expect it'll be a wild favorite face to face right they think asynchronous is not attractive post course face to face and asynchronous are pretty even in how much they use them and how they rate them right um they actually end up using asynchronous more than face-to-face, -face. you know, maybe 60% of the time, something like that. Let's see if we can get this selected, right? And so their perceptions shift over the course of a high flex course, right? And, uh, you know, the question is why, I guess, you know, why did, why did their perception shift? Why do they think face-to-face -face is going to be what they want and what they need? And then at the end, they're like, ah, I used async more. And, and the reason why is, um, that, you know, students um, have idealized, have idealized expectations of what their semester is going to be like at the beginning and what they're going to be able to do and the amount of time they're going to have and the, the flexibility and how things are going to work out. They have idealized expectations, right? And so another way of putting this, I guess, you know, is, is uh, you know, life. <laughs> let's uh, let's uh, do this up here. Um, life intervenes, right? And we're just, we're just relentlessly optimistic that it won't, but life intervenes. Life keeps intervening. And it's one of the reasons why a lot of students end up dropping out of programs, right, is life intervenes and they have set themselves up in a modality that's kind of unforgiving, right? They've set them up in this modality that's unforgiving. That's one of the reasons why HyFlex is, is a really interesting option for the future outside of, of COVID. Uh, but now... Right now, what does this mean? Because because now, if we think about it, students have a lack of choice. They're kind of being forced into this, right? Um, I lack choice. Less choice is the same thing. Let's let's. What else can we say here? Yeah, there's. An, I guess we can say there's an irony, right? Uh, there's an irony here because we know when students have the choice, they use face to face half or less, right? Which is about what we'll be giving them in the best scenario, assuming uh, we're at the right phase. But the difference here is that in this case, they don't necessarily have the agency, 
right? And so they're going to feel it not as something empowering, but as, as something foisted on them. So I guess that leads me to one question to think about and that I'd like to discuss um, maybe in the... Um, maybe in the Zoom session that we have uh, uh, next week. And I, I, the question would be, you know, how do we, um, it'll take me a while to write this out here. So um, questions about giving the students a sense of agency, making them feel like this is not something completely forced on them. But, you know, can we implement this in a way, in some way, right, which preserves some of that sense of agency that students have with normal high flex, right? And maybe it's impossible, right? Maybe it's just impossible to do that. But if we could do that, I think their experience would be better. Um, I think it would give them some sense of control uh, over a world where that's in short supply. Uh, and I think it's a question worth thinking about. Can we preserve some sense of student agency uh, as we implement this?